Oh, that so, is pretty cool, the shock filter. Yeah. There's there was, a, there was another one for the Yeti that was pretty good. It was, it was called, like, the spider or something like that. You put it on your table, and then you just add your Yeti up in it. Huh. I was mounting it, and it was pretty slick. I like that. Okay, we're live. We're live. Welcome. So, uh, David, I didn't, uh, we're live on the, and I'm recording. Um, what I didn't tell you was that uh, the show starts off with uh, Ray doing a little intro. And, uh, and where am I? Okay, hold on. Where did that go? Okay, there it is. Uh, Ray starts off by doing a little intro, and then uh, uh, we, then there's a place where the jingle goes, and then we come mm -hmm. back, and I do an announcement, and we introduce you and stuff, so. Cool. And uh, I need the announcements. Okay, so, um, okay, now I got it right. Okay, we're uh, ready to go, and, and so, oh, hey, for those of you on the Hangout, uh, we're going to be talking with David Walsh today. You've probably seen him all over the online video marketers uh, um, uh, Facebook group, and you, you've heard of him. You know, he's he's one of the top guys, along with Daryl Leaves and Ray, the video guy. So we're going to interview him on a bunch of stuff today. But that was good. <laughs> Did you get any boogers in that one? Um, and <laughs> you know, Doctor Johnny Fever got fired for saying booger on the air. I, you know, that. This is very strange, but that was the first thing that popped into my head. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, it, it depends on what his definition of booger is. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> um, so and, 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 and anyhow, so we're going to talk about vlogging. There's my beagle in the back. We're going to talk Ooh. about vlogging and uh, other stuff with David because he's a YouTube expert. So anyhow, the show is uh, ready to go in three, two, one. This episode of video. Whoa, there's a big echo. Three. Two. I hear lots of echo, though. That was crazy. Yeah, like big time. I don't know if anyone else can. I don't hear any other echo. All right. Uh, there's no it. echo when you speak, but when everyone else speaks, there's echo. So it probably is you, Steve. Is it? Is it me? How that about now? Echo, echo, One. echo. One. Yeah, there you go. Right, there you go. Okay. I. You know what? Let's uh, let's do this. That's a good idea. Sorry for you folks out there in <laughs> TV land. We'll TV keep you land. entertained. Uh, oh, look, what happens. now? See, with Propecia. It's my fault. <laughs> it's always my fault. Hair for men. <laughs> look at this. Make it, you guys making fun of me again? A little bit, a little bit. Okay, well, that's fine. I'm used to it. <laughs> okay, there we go. Say something. Something. Something, 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 something. Beautiful, beautiful. All right. That looks that sounds good. I'm getting a little echo from you now, right? Are you hearing that, Dave? One, uh, I one, hear when one, you're talking, one, yeah. one, two, one, two, one, two. I'm not hearing anything. Well, I mean, I'm hearing you guys, so I'm not hearing an echo. Ray sounds good. So, ah, thank you. Ray sounds okay? Yeah, it's when you speak, you, you've got the echo now. I don't have any echo. Oh, why? <laughs> so bizarre. For those of you on the Hangout, this is the fun stuff here right oh, now. Oh, I know why. I know why. Okay. Because you put your headphones right into yeah, the... Yeah, uh... okay. It's fixed. Okay, <laughs> sorry for for all of you on the live Hangout that you have to be exposed to this, but it is a behind-the-scenes look. Okay. <laughs> all right. And we're going to begin recording the podcast in three, two, one. This episode of Video Marketing Madness is made possible by Free Video Editor. Are you looking to start editing videos, but you don't want to spend $8 billion on some sort of crazy video editing system? Then check out freevideoeditor.co. We'll leave off that M. So freevideoeditor.co, where you can download the Shotcut Video Editor along with some other goodies and start doing things like green screening and three-point editing and all sorts of other great high-end video editing features. Check it out now, freevideoeditor.co. And on today's show, we've got YouTube and vlogging expert David Walsh all the way from... Uh, well, from London today, you know, he's uh, escaped the Emerald Isle and headed to London, so uh, we're talking to him all the way from there. Should be good stuff. Okay, and this is where the jingle goes. You know, I really am pathetic. I was blaming you guys for that. <laughs> hey, that's all right. 
Yeah. Do you want me to sing the jingle? De, 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 no. de, 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 de. Okay. You, you do look like a blues harmonica player with those glasses. He on. looks like one of the blues brothers. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Three, two, one. It's the radio show about video, video marketing madness with Ray the Video Guy, and I'm Steve Sleeper. Got a question for Ray? Go to raythevideoguy.com slash ASK. Leave your question. If he answers it, you'll win all kinds of great video marketing stuff. Our Facebook page is Video Marketing Madness. Our Twitter is Video MKT Madness, and we've got plenty of useful tips there every day. And now you know them, you love them. He was in Stevie Ray Vaughan's band at one time. <laughs> Ray Lane, for those of you watching. Yes. That. Well, I think that was a little before my time, but that's okay. okay. I'm here, and I'm excited because we've got a great guest today, and we're going to talk a lot more about video with somebody else, and it's not going to be me talking, so I think people should be excited by that. We've got uh, one of my good friends, super martial art expert, Irish, English living video vlogging master, David Walsh. David, how are you? I am absolutely fantastic, Ray. Great to be here. Yes. Well, we're glad to have you on. It's always good Thank when we have a much. guest on. So. It's been a long time. We talked about this, what, two years ago? Now, have, have you never been on the show before? Never. <gasps> what? Oh, I thought you were never. ahead. I thought you were a return. I thought you were our uh, Steve Martin here making your, nope. uh, your return. Nope. But, wow. Okay. It's my debut today. Oh, that's cool. Well, we couldn't get Daryl Leaves, so we decided to bring you on. And uh, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, and besides, Daryl wouldn't shut up. I had to tell him to be quiet a couple times. <laughs> yeah, we had to cut him off. You know, get what? Big... Daryl not oh. stop talking? No, that's not true. We want to get him back on the show. Quit saying those things. I know, I know, I know. Well, he doesn't. You know, he. <laughs> Like he'll, he'll, tell, he'll tell you straight himself anyway. So yeah, you know. he makes fun of me all the time, anyhow. So as well, he should. Yes, yes, we all should. We all should do that. But we're not here to talk about you today, Steve. We're not going to pick on you too much. We're here to talk about vlogging. And David, can you give us a give us a little definition of vlogging? Because I think a lot of people get confused by this and what it actually is. Yeah, well, vlogging stands for video blogging. So you take the V and you slap off slap slash off the V the B and you just stick them together so you get video blogging. So vlogging and basically what it is. Um, if people are familiar with YouTube at all, they'll see those kids in the bedroom talking to a camera, which end up being multimillionaires for doing so because they document their lives on camera and seemingly kids find this interesting. So that, in a nutshell, is what vlogging is. You know, um, you, you brought up a really good thing there. That, I'm sorry to interrupt you there, but yeah. the kids do love this stuff. It's amazing. My yeah. kids do not watch television. Yeah. They watch YouTube. Exactly, exactly, and as so many people uh, that I've met, especially in the U.S. side of things, they say the exact same. Less and less people are watching TV these days uh, because there is so much stuff you can get online, especially on YouTube and also with Netflix and stuff like this. You don't need to watch um, TV on, on their schedule anymore. You can watch it on your own schedule, and this is what it's all about. But e with the vlogging thing, what it is, it's reality TV, but it's not scripted. Unlike what you get on TV, you know. So it's so really, really reality TV. It, it is the real reality TV, you know. So yeah. and, and that and it, it that it's that element that people connect with. Well, you know, and it's funny because uh, this past year when we did uh, the uh, Vid Summit this past yeah. year, a lot of what was talked about on that particular week was uh, was about video blogging. It was exactly. much more about these vloggers I and mean, they brought in a lot of great guests they brought in yeah. a lot of people that do this and it really opened my eyes because I've always been on the you know business side of of YouTube marketing which is helping businesses to do yeah. educational things and and whatnot and for me it blew my mind I, you know I don't know if you remember the um, there was a couple of kids from Utah they go around Brooklyn, and they just Brooklyn and Bailey well, it was them too, but these guys, oh, they went around and did uh, like skateboarding videos. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. all they did was just travel around doing skateboarding yeah. videos. And, and they didn't even do the skateboarding. They just filmed everybody else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And even like Devin Supertramp, that's something similar to what he's done. And he's probably the most famous guy for doing that sort of stuff. Yeah, and it blows me. It blows my mind. So where is this going? What, what, how, does, how do people, everyday people, 
deal with vlogging? Like, what's the purpose of it for the average everyday person? Okay, so if you're not sort of narcissistic and wanting to be a, a YouTube star, for want of a better expert or for want of a better word, then there actually is, from a business point of view, because I'm just like you, I help businesses uh, develop a YouTube strategy and you know connect with their audience and and d develop customers from there. Um, vlogging can actually help. Uh, build their business because you have this element of authenticity, authenticity even uh, because there's nothing between you and the and you know you and them just a camera so you're connecting with them on a one to one level and it's it's just amazing how people can connect with with people anywhere in the world with just a simple webcam or even a you know a DSLR or whatever type of thing um, it's it freaks me out you know it's like, and this is the same thing why Periscope has taken off so well because there's no, you don't have a problem with equipment. You take your phone, you take your phone, you switch it on, you put in the app, you set up your account, you press go, that's it. You know, and that's all you have to do. And vlogging is something similar. You know, kids are in the, literally you're in the bedroom with a camera on a tripod, maybe a light or just getting the light from the window, and they just press record and they just talk. That's it. Oh, we love it. And and you mentioned, um, you know, I was mentioning the skateboard kids, yeah. but you brought up Bailey and uh, what is it? Yeah, Bailey Brooklyn and, and Bailey. Yeah. Brooklyn and Bailey. And their story blew my mind because, yeah. you know, when we think of vlogging, a lot of times we're thinking about, you know, uh, iCarly or, you know, things yeah. like that. But, Jenna Marble, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. These guys, these girls, they started with their mom showing people how to do hairdos. Yeah. They weren't even allowed to. Sh their parents wouldn't allow them to show their faces on camera because they were under thirteen. You know, they yeah. and, and then there was there's a good reason why they wanted to protect them and stuff because their channel was exploding and they just didn't want to get sort of fangirls or stalkers or anything like that. But when they tried, you know, as we know, as when they turned thirteen, that's when they officially got their channel and that just exploded from nothing. Oh yeah, and and you know the the story behind the the hairdo one, the mom would just braid their hair. These two yeah. girls. And they would get millions of views, and and if I remember correctly, didn't they say that they bought a house from their YouTube yeah. money? Yeah, well, they, yeah, they, and there's so many people doing that. Like even uh, like if you remember the year before about the girl with those uh, loom band thingies. Oh yeah, you know, the loom. She, yeah, she she bought her. She's what 13, 14 at the time, and she bought her parents their house. <laughs> How ridiculous is that? Well, I'm I'm waiting for my kids to buy me a, a new house. So it's, uh, <laughs> you need to buy them their DSLR for Christmas, I think. <laughs> right, well, they've got the camera. They just got to get to work. You and go. Here's your iPhone. House, so. Go go make some videos. <laughs> no, it, it it really is. It's a brave new world. It's and it's amazing. And you know, to take this one step further, um, they showed a, a chart. And they pulled up some of the most popular TV shows in America. Yeah. For instance, The Big Bang Theory. And yeah. they showed how many views they get each week on that show. And it was like, you know, 18 million views or whatever every week. And then they showed, you know, Booty Pie getting yeah. like 40 million views every week. Yeah. And it just blew my mind to think that, you know, they're beating, they're getting more people to watch him than they are getting people to watch a scripted, expensive television yeah. program. And of course, each of the actors on that show are making, you know, a couple million dollars a year. Exactly. So yeah, I, I think I think the mind. stats were I think the stats were um, Big Bang Theory for the year, PewDiePie was getting for a week in in a week or a month. Wow. Something I mean, ridiculous like that. And you'd think that, you know, gosh, I mean, once uh, once the advertisers truly catch on to this, you would think that he's going to be making more money than them. But, uh, you know, it doesn't seem he's to be going quite that bad. direction yet. He's no, he's not doing bad. bad. <laughs> Reported 7.4 million last year. I think he's doing okay. Well, and I think his I think his biggest problem is he's not really – he's making that money without really going out and monetizing it either. He's just collecting his YouTube channel. He's just, he's just him being him and just going to want to do this. Yeah, okay, let's – let's yeah, I'll send it off. No problem. <laughs> yeah, but, and, and, that's, and, and that's what YouTube has allowed people to do is to take control back from the people in Hollywood and the, the, the TV studios and whatever because uh, at, at uh, VidCon last year, I think it was Zay Frank who was talking – about how he met uh, a guy in the back, some famous YouTuber, and who was being offered a uh, a movie deal, and he said, "Oh, you're going to take it." And I says, "Well, why why do I want to 
uh, create something that I have no control over and take a pay cut at the same time. <laughs> so it, it sort of puts you back to think, oh, Hollywood's great, but then when you look at it, I'm, I can do more stuff on my own YouTube channel, and I own the whole thing. Well, and, and you know, I don't think people look at YouTube in that same way, but yeah. really, you need to, especially these days, yeah. because people can watch YouTube right on their televisions, they can their watch phone, it from their computers, whatever. their phones, and if you really take it seriously, you, you own your own station. You could, yep. you could have a channel where you literally do what NBC does and every Tuesday have John Smith's show and every yep. Thursday this show. You know, There's no stopping you from doing any of this stuff, and not many people are taking full advantage of it yet, but boy, I'll tell you, it, it certainly could go in that direction. Well, YouTube's tagline itself is broadcast yourself, and that's literally what you can do. You are, as you said, your own TV station. You know, and 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 that's and that's how you know uh, I approach my clients, and I'm sure you do too. Is that you have like you're uploading video on a regular basis. You have your schedule, like your TV show does, um, and stuff like that, or a TV channel. And and that's exactly and funnily enough, that's exactly how YouTube want you to be as well. They want to be seen as the alternative to a TV channel. Right, and and they talk about that, you know, in their actual playbook, you know, yeah. making sure that you're consistent and yeah. and all of that kind of fun stuff, and uh, you know, it it really does make a big difference. Huge. So, so let me ask you this, you know, how how do yeah. all these guys afford their multi million dollar cameras and lighting equipment for these? <laughs> <laughs> well, AdSense only brings in so much, <laughs> but uh, it's it's uh, it's endorsements. You know, just like athletes and stuff like that. It's like uh, a pro athlete will make so much from from his day job, but it's all the endorsements is where the real money is to be made, and that's the same for YouTube. Um, you know, and that's why you have the likes of DreamWorks buying up uh, Awesomeness TV, and then Disney buying up uh, Maker and stuff like that because they see that they have this whole thing, whole you know, slew of talent for want of a better word, at their fingertips that they can tap into and then use that to go and develop TV shows from. You know, and then they can bring endorsements of their own to those people um, you know, and get them at half the price than they probably would if they were approaching them outside of owning the MCN they belong to. Nice. And and we've seen that, you know, we've seen some of that crossover in the past where yeah. people from YouTube have become sensations in yeah. the normal world. Justin Bieber, uh, there was this yeah. really annoying teen show called uh, Fred with this really annoying kid that did this weird voice and everything, and he had movies and TV yeah. shows and, and whatnot, and he started on YouTube, and, and I think... If you go way back, I think uh, Tom Green even started that way, uh -huh. uh, or he had his show and whatnot. So it's it's definitely got that crossover appeal if you can take it to that level. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And I, uh, even on this side of the Atlantic, uh, a lot of the TV channels are bringing in YouTubers because they want to tap into that younger audience that they won't, they can't get access to without having to do that because the normal TV shows, as you say, the kids aren't watching TV. So they have to pull in the YouTuber to go, hey, we're on TV. Oh, yeah, better. What's that thing in the sitting room that I watch again? <laughs> yeah, but the it's something my parents watch. I don't know what it is. You know, I mean, the 15-year-olds the aren't sitting back and watching Inspector Morse every week anymore or what? <laughs> Well, Inspector Morse is literally dead. Um, it's, it's, it's Endeavor now, so it's, it's ah, free yes. Morse. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, it is funny to see all of that. And for those of you joining us, we've got David Walsh, YouTube and video blogging expert here with us, and we're talking a little bit about vlogging and YouTube. Steve, you got any questions for Dave? Yeah, I think the, the big thing is is um, just keeping it real. You know, yeah. the, the, you know um, uh, we... we uh, one of our first shows, we talked to the guys that did the Mentos exploding Coke you uh -huh. know, thing, and it went viral. And they actually consult with companies on how to do viral yeah. videos, which to me is like consulting with somebody on how to win the lottery. But anyhow, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but there, there, there is a strategy to it, but it costs a shed load of money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and uh, but but their big thing, and I think this is for for any YouTube video vlogging video that we're talking about is to keep it keep it real you know yeah. and these days where you've got an iPhone and you can plug a microphone into yeah. it that's all, that's all you really need and you got your own TV station Frankie Literally. McDonald the uh, the autistic weather guy you know uh, starts off by saying Frankie McDonald my own TV station this guy gets millions of views 
uh, on on his videos when he's forecasting a blizzard in Nebraska. You know, yeah. and people just love it. It's it, it, it's it's real. What one of the things that I always thought would be cool for the Main Street uh, businesses is is what we're doing right now a hangout where yeah. uh, plumber comes on. Uh, and does share some good information. Uh, you can do a screen sharing thing on the Hangout and and do a series of vlogs like that and keep it real. Yeah. Uh, the production values don't. I mean, they can't be terrible, but they. I mean, it's a Hangout, you know, so yeah. it's not real great to begin with. Uh, but I think it's all about content and and then take that content, get it transcribed, put it on your website. Google's going to love you. Your customers are going to love yeah. you. It's kind of a neat thing. Absolutely, and e even going a step further is if you're at a, a customer's house as a plumber and you can just whip out your phone, stick on Periscope, mm -hmm. or even um, I, there's an app you can actually do connect straight to um, YouTube now as well uh, called Wirecast Go. And basically it's like Periscope for YouTube. So you can actually go, hey, we're looking at this sink that's leaking, here's the issue, blah, 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 and you can show you doing it on camera. And then oh. post that to your thing and go, hey, you know, if you'd like me to help you with your thing, but you know, nice call to action in the end, and you can even get a testimonial from the customer as you're standing there. Is that like a live event then? It's like an interface to the live exactly, event. exactly. Yeah, and okay. if you know, if you've got some good SEO uh, chops about you, you can actually um, title your your video very well, and you can jump over your competition very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they. Yeah. I, I heard. I heard they were originally going to call that. Oh crap! We got to hurry. But then they decided to change it. <laughs> no, no, YouTube are still calling it that. <laughs> but, why, but you Wire, know, Wirecast decided to get the jump on them again. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and Wirecast has done a, a a fairly good job working with with YouTube on on a yeah. lot of that stuff. Uh, hopefully, no offense to Wirecast, but hopefully this product is a lot better than than the actual yeah, Wirecast, Wirecast app. Up. So yeah, yeah, it's, we will, it, uh, it, we will it, certainly it, uh, find out. Yeah, it is. I downloaded it today and I've been sort of playing around with it and allows you to uh, put transparent images over it so you can put your logos on there and stuff like that. So you can have three layers of imaging, nice. uh, which is nice. And you can also, which is quite cool, is that you can actually do a playback. So you just push on the screen, roll back to where you were before, and then put it back and then go back to being live again. Oh, that's very cool. I'll, I'll be so, checking that one out today. So, so some nice, nice features. So it'd be interesting to see how that compares with um, Periscope moving forward. Well, in some ways, I, I would have to say it's it's a little bit better. Periscope is is good, but uh, you know that whole disappearing after yeah, 24 the twenty four hour, hour thing is a, is a bit of a pain. You know, yeah, you can save it. There are a number of ways you can save it, and, and they're they're changing stuff. that now, supposedly. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see yeah. how that goes. But yeah, a good integration direct to YouTube would be the best thing if they could do. If, well, if they would decide to do it, there software to do that. There, yes. there actually is software that will handle that for you. There's, uh, um, oh gosh, now I can't remember the name of it, of course, because I'm right on a, a on, on a live here. But there was actually a plugin for your website where you did a Periscope. Yeah. Periscope would contact your website, post it on your post it on your website and on YouTube at the same time, yeah. and so you kind of had the best of all all worlds there. It was uh, Cindy Batty, I believe, came out with that. Yeah, one. With the, yeah. The problem with that is that it didn't record the uh, the comments though or the hearts. That's true. Yes, it was just the uh, the actual video. Yeah, so. it was just the video itself. So, but yeah, you, you know, you can you can just go back on you, you get a VA to watch your scope and then just record it, and you get all the hearts and the the the, the comments and stuff. So yeah, there's there's ways and means around it, but I'm sure. In the next couple of months, we'll actually be able to get a much better option with it with the app itself. So let me ask you this: you know, yeah. how does? I mean, we talked a lot about vlogging with YouTube specifically, yes. but of course, we've got Periscope now. We've yeah. got yeah. Facebook Live. We've got Facebook yeah. moving into video a lot harder. Yes. Where do you see vlogging going over the next year or two? And I think it's actually going to go more and more mainstream. I think that we're going to have more CEOs of big companies um, go live. Maybe It may not be every single day. You won't see them standing in the line at Starbucks waiting for their coffee or whatever, or their assistant bringing their coffee. But you will see them more and more communicating directly with their audience and stuff like that. And it might be that there's somebody in the marketing department with a big stick pushing them in the back to do so. But I think we're going to see that. Just as we did sort of like the last 10 years, we had the CEOs of major airlines go on commercials and stuff like that. I think we're going to see more and more of them uh, come forward and using Periscope and even maybe YouTube Live or whatever 
um, to connect with their audience and reassure their customers that they're a good company and they should still spend money with them because all of these smaller companies which have you know have no fear of these media uh, can just pick up their phone go hey we're such and such we do an awesome job in XYZ and people go huh I like them I will buy their product that's it basically a step above tweeting which a lot of yeah them yeah. yeah so They'll, they, yeah, it, 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 because people want to connect with with somebody, not not just a, a an, an anonymous company. Yeah. Bigger companies were really going to start to absolutely. Yeah. I, I think it is a case that somebody in the marketing department is just going to get a big stick and just, you know, you need to be in front of this and you need to do it now. Yep. From a business point of view, um, I because I, I I've started vlogging. I haven't put anything up, but I've, I've started recording my vlogs and stuff uh, for a personal reason, not not from a business point of view. Um, but I still uh, because of I'm I'm using video marketing savvy. I'm still using them from a, <clears throat> a video marketing standpoint. So I still have my opening capture attention um, element. So here's what my uh, here's what the video is about today. You know, so I'm including tips in my blog. Um, so here's what we're going to talk about today, and then go to a bit of a, an update on what I'm doing, and then go into the content, and then a call to action. So if you're doing any sort of video at all on YouTube, you can use the same format in that. Just your, uh, for me, it's rough and ready. I'll show you exactly what I'm like. I've got my, whoops, I've got my GoPro on a selfie stick. That's what I'm doing. So I'm not even putting up tripods or lights or anything like that. I want this rough and ready that wherever I am, I can just go, boom, I'm ready to do this. And it's, it, 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 I hope, I hopefully, it's going to come across as more authentic and stuff like that. So, But, you know, again, you can take your phone, stick it on a tripod or even on the end of your hand or your arm or whatever, and just record yourself talking as if you're talking to your best friend. And you know, as as we say to our clients, talk to the camera like it's your best friend anyway. So if you're doing any video whatsoever, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not. It's just another step, just more personal. That's it. Love it. Well, that's it, and that's some great advice there. Now, once we do this, let's say you know you're an average person. Yeah. Uh, where do where should you go with this? As far as, for instance. Um, What's the angle? Because obviously we see some of these guys, you know, they're they're playing video games or yeah. they're opening Disney boxes or yes. whatever. You know, I'm just a I'm an accountant or I'm just yeah. a you know whatever it happens to be. You know, where should I be going with this? Uh, with every piece of content that you make, whether it's a video, tweets, blog posts, whatever, always look to create value and educate in some way, shape, or form. So if you are an accountant and it's coming up to the end of the tax year, obviously you you know people are stressed and people are whatever. So I'm sure <clears throat> as an accountant, you've got a million and one tips that you can give people. So you've got un almost unlimited content you can uh, create and go, hey, look, uh, obviously it's coming up to tax year now. And um, if you're stressing out about your blah, 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 whatever that the IRS might come after, well, here's five things that you can do. And you just do it straight to camera and then upload that uh, to your YouTube channel or if it's on Periscope or whatever. So just look at creating value, uh, looking at that somebody who has an interaction with you, that their lives are better off for doing so. And that's yeah. why these blogs are are having such a profound effect on the kids because they're connecting with these people and they are having these profound effects on these people that they're moving them. They're moving them so much that they're willing to go and see them at an event halfway around the world and stuff wow. like that. You know, so so yeah, just just create value because when you give the best content that you can give at the time, now it might not be the best content in the world, but if it's the best content that you have to give, that's what matters. Just give great content, great value, and people will connect with you from that. Well, and there's, there's one thing that I've always told people, which is, you know, 
the big thing I always get, well, you know, I'm not really that much of an expert. Well, you know what? You're more of an expert than I yeah, am. Exactly. You know, the, the worst plumber exactly. in the world is an expert to me yeah. because, you know, I know nothing about it. So yeah. there's always value you can provide to somebody, and I think that's the, the big thing to remember. And, of exactly. course, you've also got the opposite of that. You know, what do you love? I mean, just yeah. because you're a plumber doesn't mean you have to do a, a vlog about plumbing. Yeah. You, know, you could be, uh, you know, an enthusiast. Angel player. Exactly, or Star Wars action figure collector, or you know, um, a great example I love is um, have you have you seen Nick Nimmin's new uh, uh, yes. page that he created? Yes, I love that. I think that is brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. I love All the way it questions. Lovely. I love the way it's shot. I love the things he comes up with. I, I just, you know, and I know he's new. He's still as he, at the time, you know, kind of a pre-revenue type yeah. deal. So. But I'm I'm hoping that he makes it big with that because I think it could be a very very big deal and yeah. I, and I love the way he does it and of and course that, you know, and that's and that's in a vlog format you know just straight yeah. to camera just cuts no no nothing fancy easy peasy and it has nothing to do with what he normally does which is no. graphic design so I, yeah. you know I love it I think that's a fantastic thing so it's a great opportunity to you know hey if you hate your job do your job from nine to five and then come home and do this until you can make money with it I, that's I, it I love that's that. it you know it, it gives you the freedom to do something that you love so that you're enjoying life not not facing you know fearing the nine to five type of thing or your job whatever you do um, so yeah it, it can give you that um, artistic release or just a you know fun release uh, to, so that you have a smile on your face when you're going to bed at night I love it, and and I've got uh, you know I'm thinking of a few that I want to do, so I'm getting excited about this now. So <laughs> if only there was more hours in the day to do. So. You need to you need to go to Korea and get yourself cloned. Uh, you know, I, seriously, I think I I think I do need that. We could do a, blo a vlog about that. How to get yourself cloned. <laughs> <laughs> so Is Steve, what are you thinking about? What's your What's your vlog that you're going to do, Steve? Yeah, I'm already doing uh, the the podcasting thing, so you know I've got it uh, pretty well covered. You know, and besides, I got a face for radio, so you know, uh, I, I don't, you know, you know, I, but my answer is I don't know. You know, I, I you know, I, I've I've always liked the radio thing, I guess. You know what? I, you know what I've gotten excited about lately, and and this has nothing to do with anything, but something I've thought about doing a vlog on. Have you guys heard of escape rooms? Yes. Well, I've fallen in love with these things, and we've been all over the place going to these things. And man, I'll tell you, huh. I I could, and I always talk to the guys and everything. I got to start recording these because I think we could have some really good fun with uh, recording some of the creators of these because they're not big businesses. They're just some guy who picked up a little piece of real estate somewhere and put it together, and and is having a lot of fun doing it. But for those of you who don't know what an escape room is, essentially, it's almost like a, a video game in real life. You know, you get put into a place. And you might have to figure out how to escape the room mm -hmm. by solving mysteries and clues and puzzles and things like that. And, and it's a lot of fun. We go to them yeah. quite a bit now. So, um, you know, that that's one possibility that I may go with. And, and I'm thinking about doing that. And I think that would be a lot of fun to do that as well. So, Well, that, that would be another sort of level of gaming, in effect, really. Which it would really be, would be. Very, yeah. very interesting. So could be fun. Now I just got to figure out how to put it all together and actually do it. So... <laughs> I hey, well, you, you can get paid by the, the, the guys who run these to come and film it. Well, we could definitely, yeah, that's definitely a possibility. So we'll see how it goes. But You guys are exciting. I need hobbies. <laughs> <laughs> you, could, you could do a, a vlog on, on how to shovel snow. There we go. <laughs> or shovel know. beagles in the snow. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the beagle? I think she left <laughs> the room. She's yeah. burying a bone in the snow, probably. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, David, let me ask you this now. Yeah. So, let's take this to the next level. We've got yeah. we've got our content. We're yes. starting to shoot all of these things. We've got our YouTube channel. We're we're putting up these videos. What do we need to do with that channel to really get people to notice it? You know, what is it typical SEO? Is is there other things we need to be doing with these to be able to get attention? Um, SEO will only get you so far. Um, in the past, it, it, you know, before you know, 2000, and I'd say 12 or 13, SEO would have got you quite well. Um, you would have got a lot of traction by yourself. But today, it's all about collaborations and connecting with other people. And from a business perspective, it's about paid traffic as well. Um, <laughs> you know, and uh, you need to have a budget, even even if you're just a gamer. 
Um, you know, you need to have a budget to get things moving, uh, to get some traction on your videos, get some traction on your channel and subscribers and stuff. So, you know, YouTube is literally big business. And if you are looking to be a success in any way, shape, or form, whether that is a business through to a vlogger or a game or whatever, you need to have a budget. Um, and that will then allow you, once you get to a certain subscriber count, then, you know, that, that figure will allow you to connect with other people. So you can do... Uh, uh, collaboration videos and stuff like that and I've done quite a few with uh, many people in different genres like we talked about Nick I did one, uh, did one with him I've also done with Daryl I've also done with some bloggers and stuff as well so and that's where you can then cross promote um, yourself using other people's platforms um, it, recently I worked with a client in South America um, where she she tried to connect with other vloggers, but uh, she but it wasn't working because the people she was trying to connect with were far too big. I went in, looked at her YouTube channel, and looked at there was quite big vloggers who were actually subscribers of hers. So we just went in and went contact these people, and she come back to me the next week and says, yeah, all of them uh, have said yes. One she's already set up a, a collaboration with, and looking at her figures this week, she had a massive bump in subscribers. Uh, I don't know if she's done anything, but I'm assuming she's actually done uh, that collaboration video because her subscriber count has just boosted big time. She got about two months' worth of subscribers in one day. So, um, it, And again, it, YouTube is a social platform. You need to connect with people, whether that is for your business, with your customers, but also connect with other people who have similar businesses that are uh, complementary to yours. So if you are a plumber, then you can talk to the carpenter or the accountant or the bank manager or whoever type of thing and see what can be done there. Nice. Oh, I love that idea. And collaboration, obviously, is a big thing. We yeah. talked about that a lot lately. And I love that idea of just getting out there, even if you're a local business and doing that. That's exactly. a, a great idea that a lot of people don't think about. And, you know, uh, chances are... If you're a local business, if you're a plumber and you're doing YouTube, you're yeah. probably the only one doing it, or at least doing yes. it effectively, and the carpenters aren't doing that, and these guys aren't doing it. It's a great time to be able to bring them in, and of course, you know, their customers will want to see that, and you can give them a copy of it and, and all that kind of fun stuff Absolutely. and really make a big deal out of it. Absolutely, and mm -hmm. if you wanted to be sort of proactive, you can actually take your video and go into someone else's business and talk about their business on your YouTube channel rather than then talk about their your business on your YouTube channel. You can be proactive, so you can actually sort of like a little mini chamber of commerce on YouTube, help promote other businesses in your area or whatever type of thing in your community. So, And then you can become that YouTube business celebrity in your area that people want to connect with. I love it. Well, that's fantastic. And David, is there anything, anything else we need to know about this video blogging stuff? Because it's uh, it certainly is quite an interesting and... and in a large area to, to talk about. Yes. Um, if, if, if it piques your interest, um, uh, hopefully it has. Um, uh, for some of you, I, I, know, I know it will. Just go and do it. Try it out. Because I know, like with my vlog stuff, it's scaring the pants off me. Um, <laughs> you know, it's like I've got you know, tens of thousands, of, a shed load of subscribers on my YouTube channel, but this is something completely different. Not YouTube-centric or anything like that. This is a personal thing I'm doing for myself. Um, and I just want to help people along the way as I do it, and it's scaring the bejesus out of me. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's it, and and that's a good thing. If it didn't scare me, then I wasn't doing something right. You know, it's, it's like meh. Moving, yeah, it's like, you, moving you out of your comfort level, which is exactly yeah. exactly. But the the funny thing is, is when I tell people what I'm doing, they're going, "Oh, let me know when your channel's up. I want to look at it." And I'm going, "Huh, <laughs> okay." And and that's the power that vlogs have. Um, it's just people want to connect with people, and they want they want the insider knowledge. They want the behind the scenes, and that's what you get from these things. You know, oh, what did you do today? Oh, did you see such and such? Oh, he fell off his bike, or he fell off the chair, or whatever. <laughs> blah blah blah. You know that sort of thing. And and it, that sort of brings up a point as well. It's like don't be afraid to make mistakes because mistakes are give you the one of the best things you can have in your videos. Outtakes. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and, and and you know. Mistakes just make it more real, and and I tell people this all the time. It, when you and I are having a conversation, I'm not going to get every no. single word perfect. I'm going to stumble. I'm going to stutter. No. I'm going to say something dumb yeah. at some point in time, and that's okay. That's conversational. It's what exactly, 
Exactly. It isn't scripted, and you've got your ums and your ahs and your boo, whatever type of thing, and you, you're, you know, you're, your train of thought just goes off on a tangent. But that's life. That's the way people are, and that's the way uh, people talk, as you say, in a conversational manner. And put those things in. And again, it, it, this, is, this is one of the problems that a lot of my clients have, and probably yours are the same, Ray, is that, oh, I don't want to make mistakes. And I go, no. Mistakes <laughs> equals one thing. Outtakes. Outtakes yeah. are brilliant. You'll get more views on your outtakes than you will in your content. You want you want to know a dirty little secret? I I actually will intentionally uh, make mistakes to just have some good outtakes. I have to sometimes because <laughs> when I do a video and it's all perfect, I go, I go crap. I've no outtakes. Oh, no, yeah. I'm disappointed yeah. when it when I do it correctly. One of the one of the videos that I got the most comments out of was actually one where in the middle of it I had a sneezing fit. <laughs> and and I put that at the end, and people loved it. They thought that was the yeah. greatest thing. Was this outtake of me like starting the line and then just suddenly sneezing like five <laughs> times insanely? And you know they loved it. They thought that was fantastic. Yeah. So, but they're they're the ones that probably get the most comments on, on my channel. Is that oh I get oh I love it when you put the outtakes in the end. Oh ha 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 yeah, lol blah 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 that sort of thing. You know, and people connect with that because they know you make mistakes. They, and they yeah. want to see them they, because it reassures them that you're human, so they're hum they, it's okay for them to be human as well. Keeping yeah. it real. Man, exactly. A authenticity before. is so paramount to success on YouTube, irrespective of whether you're a business, a vlogger, or a kid you know, just doing games or whatever. Authenticity is key. Well, again, the guys uh, that we interviewed for the uh, the Mentos commercial, you know, the exploding pop bottle. Yeah. Uh, one of the things they had to convince Coca Cola uh, to do was uh, <laughs> not make it a slick production. Yeah, you that's know, it. It, it. It doesn't it, work. Yeah, it, it. They needed to shoot it on an iPhone. Yeah. And 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 the the eight the ad agency and I found ad agencies just don't get internet no. marketing for the most part unless they're an internet marketing yeah. ad agency. But the ad agencies just don't get it. No. They they don't mean because they're 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 forty somethings, thirty somethings, fifty somethings, and they're trying to connect with the millennial audience, and they're just going, "What are they thinking?" And it's like just <laughs> put, put the put this barrier out of the way. You know the 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 medium, you know the the the, the object you're filming with doesn't make a difference. It doesn't have to be a hundred thousand dollar camera. You just pick up your couple hundred dollar iPhone, film it, stick it up there. That's all they need. Mm -hmm. You know they they need they just need the concept. You know, and a bit of shakiness and decent audio, that's all you really need. Yeah. Love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And that's what we always say. Audio is the key video people will Absolutely. Experience. Absolutely. All right. Well, with that, I'm, I'm excited. I'm ready to start my, uh, my new one next week because, uh, you know, David, it, it, this is something I want to mention yeah. to you because you and I sat down. We were talking about this a while ago. Yeah. Uh, you and I ran into uh, the same problem. And, and I think it's something that should be addressed here because when you start one of these blogs, one of these vlogs, especially yeah. on YouTube, you're really counting on that YouTube channel. And you and I both had sleazeballs come yes. and uh, destroy our YouTube channels. Yeah. And what, what do you recommend for that? Because that's a big deal. I'm, you, you're already off the probation thing and, and back in business here, and, yeah. and I'm about to get back off. And... Mine literally was somebody coming along and, and flagging a whole bunch of my videos and YouTube not responding yeah. for six months. So yeah. how do you protect yourself from this? Well, the first, <laughs> thing, first, first thing is obviously being as clean as possible um, because you know if, if you're doing underhanded um, tactics like you're, doing, you're, you're spamming people's uh, YouTube videos and channels with, hey, subscribe to me, I've got great videos, you know, that, that will get you flagged straight away. Uh, I, I get probably about five emails a day with that same thing, oh, YouTube shut my channel down for no reason, blah, 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 and it's like there's nothing I literally can do. Right. The people I know at YouTube will not even discuss this issue. They don't want to know. They just don't want to know. If it was my channel, then I could have some leverage. But when it's someone else's channel, I have zero leverage. And you know, they'll, they'll never reply to my email even. Um, so the, the number one thing is to keep, uh, keep your nose clean as best as you can. Well, just keep your nose clean full stop. Um, quit the sub for sub if you're doing any stupid stuff like that because it's just not worth it. It's not going to get you anywhere. Um, and just uh, try and build a relationship up with YouTube as best you can. 
um, you know, get more subscribers, upload on a regular basis, uh, and build a relationship with your audience as well. Because one way that you can get your your channel back. Uh, when somebody does an underhanded technique like that is by getting subscribers to contact YouTube and sort of almost bombarding them uh, to release your videos because you know you, you're you're a good person. Uh, it doesn't always work, but in some cases it has. So nice. that that's all you can really do. There's you know YouTube is this thing that's on a very high mountain that we rarely ever get a a chance to communicate with. Well, it's, and it's very bizarre because you know I've I've had people do that before, and usually you know something will happen and they'll say hey you've got a strike and I'll be like yeah. hey check out my video there's nothing wrong with it and yeah. an hour later everything's back to normal and this time I didn't even, it's been six months I just I'm just waiting the six months because yeah. they never even responded to me sending them yeah. that, that hey check this out because there's nothing wrong here you know yeah. And uh, so it, you, you just you never know. Sometimes yeah, typically that's that's community guidelines. If it's a content strike, well, then that's something that's between you and someone else. It's not direct with YouTube. When it's a community strike, then that's a totally different uh, thing because right. then that's that's YouTube's playground. That's you're you're interfering with them, and that's where they control everything. With a content ID strike or something like that, that's between you and someone else. So you have some. At leeway to fight that, and um, there are people. You know, you'll buy royalty-free music, and somebody will go, "Hey, that's my piece of music," and they'll issue a strike on your video, uh, and you just fight it. You can do so. Yeah, and and we've seen actually we've seen that a lot lately too, and that's something to really yeah. pay attention to because we've had people. Uh, I I collect royalty-free music. There's Thanks a lot of, you know, I, there's a lot of really good royalty-free yeah. music that you can buy and use, but I also get a lot of the royalty-free music that's on the market as PLR where you yeah. can redistribute it out to others yeah. and every once in a while one of those songs for whatever reason will come back as matching some copyright yeah. and you know it's like come on it, you know it's one that's literally you can go look here it's completely yeah. distributable yeah and you no, can say I've had it on 15 videos before this and yeah. now you pick me up <laughs> hello but yeah, I, 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 I've had that loads of times and you just go back and go no I gotta fight well, this. and they—they've just changed it a little bit. Now they want the site where it's bought from, and they want the license, you know, blah blah blah. Yeah, and, and, and that's the unfortunate thing with the with these PLR things is that you don't unless you create the license yourself. You know, you're you're which, you're sort of is, stuck. And with some of these things, you you literally could. I mean, you could yeah. actually create your own license. But I know for one of them, there's there was a woman who created a lot of this, and. About three years ago, she seems to have vanished. I don't know. Maybe she uh -huh. died. I, I have no idea. But all of her sites are gone now, and so when these things happen now, it's very difficult to find that original source because she seems to be yeah. gone. Yeah, all trace so. of it's disappeared. So someone's yeah. just stepped in and go, "Yeah, I'll claim it." <laughs> so it's. A, but the big thing is, don't get scared by that, folks, because no. royal, royalty-free music doesn't mean copyright-free. There's still no. a copyright. It just means that you've got a license to be able to use it, exactly. and you don't have to pay royalties. So. Exactly. And and there's also a shed load of music free on YouTube itself. That if Absolutely. you are having hassle with with a particular royalty-free music, um, just go to YouTube, download their stuff. You know, no one's going <laughs> to touch you with that. So. Well, and you know, I, there, there is a serious issue. I. Ironically, I have had myself personally <laughs> used one of the YouTube ones before and gotten a thing saying that it was uh, a copyrighted oh song or whatever, Lord. and I'm like, only you, this right? is one of your only songs. Only you. Only you. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, we'll leave, we'll let David get back to uh, to his life here because uh, I don't know what time is it there. It's got to be uh, quarter to eight p.m. Quarter, I was going to say about probably about eight o'clock at night there. Yeah. So. All right. Well, we appreciate you coming on here. This is an exciting topic because it's not that heavy-duty business stuff. This is a little bit more fun. This is a little yeah. bit more free and something that you can make a, a good living off of if you can find the right niche. So we, we love that kind of stuff. And I appreciate you coming on and, and joining us. Any, how can people get in, a hold of you to, to learn more from you? Uh, well, if they don't know me on YouTube already, they'll get me at youtube.com forward slash David Walsh online. Um, you can also check me out on my website, davidwalshonline.com, uh, Periscope as well, periscope.com forward slash David Walsh online as well. Beautiful. All right. Well, with that, we've come to the end of another episode. Steve, what do you think? I think it was a good show. I, I'm I'm really interested in it. I gotta I gotta get a hobby so I can vlog. About it. <laughs> well, beagles are a, are a, you know dog training and just dogs in general are a big thing. So 
You never yeah. know. It could be yeah. sitting on your doorstep. Drinking used to be my hobby, but I quit that a number of years ago. That would have been funny to... Hey, Gar about. Gary Vaynerchuk's, Vaynerchuk's done very well in that That's market. Right. That's yep, right. That's sure right. Very has. true. Very true. Yeah, I, I think it would have been funny to vlog when I was drunk, you know, so... <laughs> <laughs> the drunk tyrant. <laughs> yeah, drunk, drunk uncle. You like my sign? <laughs> <laughs> screw you. I don't yeah, screw you. I don't care. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm going to start using that term that you use, shed load. I'm, you know, I'm going to say that at church. There that's you go. Shed, that's a shed load of bacon there. <laughs> I'm going to fix breakfast. <laughs> It's the radio show about video, video marketing madness with Ray the Video Guy, and I'm Steve Sleeper. Today's show made possible by... FreeVideoEditor.co. If you want to become a video editor, you want to start editing your video blogs and other things, you can head on over to FreeVideoEditor.co, download the Shotcut Video Editor, download our other goodies to go along with it, and start doing things like green screening and three-point editing and... 4K video and all that other stuff that usually requires an expensive program like Final Cut or Adobe Premiere. But you can get it now completely free at freevideoeditor.co. We had Dan Dennity on the show last week, uh, David. It was, um, mm -hmm. it, 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 you know, in some ways for me, it was like watching paint dry because uh -huh. they, they were talking about how to develop the software but it was still the takeaway is I you know it was, it was pretty cool it was pretty interesting. Yes, the, the, the coding part was the coding part was over my head but it was very yeah. interesting at the uh -huh. same time yeah, it, it, it well, was, as long as you can get to do cool stuff that's all that matters yeah, yeah that, that's, that's right that. that's right I don't care how you make the software as long yeah. as it works I don't yeah. care how those ones and zeros are lined up just as long as it can do what I wanted to do Exactly. Well, and Dan Dan would get into these coding things, and he was really excited about it. And um, uh -huh. I had no, I had no clue. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> hey, that's that's his world, though. He's a he's a coder, not oh, a video. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. And and it, it is it's it's amazing what he's done. I mean, that's oh, it is. Mind, it's know. unbelievable. And where he's going. It, uh, FreeVideoEditor.co because it's going places that you are going to want to be a part of anyway. So even if it, even if it's just for now, grab it because man, it's it's got a big future ahead of it. We always have this part of the show where Ray says, "Here's who we're interviewing," and Steve, you got a question. And uh, I was glad I had a question ready because otherwise it was going to be so. Dan, what's your favorite color? <laughs> <laughs> Because it was a it was a lot over my head, but uh, I, I I caught the basic concept. That, that was good. And if you and if you haven't seen that episode, you can grab it in the archives at uh, earn dot show and check that out there, and you can listen to that one as well. That's our that's our new podcast network. That's so, right. Nice. So maybe, maybe the maybe the David Wall show will be coming soon. We'll see. You yeah. never know. I you was thinking know. about it this morning when I was out for a run. So you never know. You never know. You never know. Got a question for Ray? Go to raythevideoguy.com slash ask. Leave your question. If he answers it, you'll win all kinds of great video marketing stuff. We haven't had some questions in a while. You need to send out an email on that. Well, you know, you know, I actually did. The, the, big, the big problem here, I don't do Periscope like I used to. When I was doing uh, Periscope, we were getting questions all the time, and I've gotten lazy and, and haven't been doing my Periscopes. I'm, I'm very naughty in that regard. I need to get back into it, so I know. Well, and, and the novelty of it, too, was pretty cool. When Periscope <laughs> first came out, you were always doing Periscopes, and the only reason I even got on Periscope was to watch you doing Periscopes. So. <laughs> yeah, i got to get back into it. I, you know, it takes five minutes a day, and, and for some reason I'm just uh, not pulling out and doing it. I need yeah. to get my button gear because I tell everybody else how great it is, and then I've... Uh, yeah. I've fallen off the wagon, so... Yeah, but everybody wants to do a blog or a vlog or a podcast or a Periscope, and uh, everybody wants to do it. It's just actually doing it. And and, and, yep. and, I, and I don't say that in a judgmental way, either. It's tough to do. You know, it's just it's a lot It of can it. be. You, you still got to pay the bills first, you know? That's right. Yep. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> That's right. Uh, let's see. Facebook page, Video Marketing Madness, Twitter, Video MKT Madness, and we've always got... Uh, at least eight, nine, ten useful video marketing tips there every day. So, yes. and we announce our shows there too. So, indeed. So, uh, why don't we wrap it up with a jingle? Let's do it. And there's the jingle. We didn't hear it, but we'll we'll Yay. hear it. Yay. 
people on uh, on on YouTube right now are going, "What in the world are they talking about?" <laughs> yeah, the, well, watch well, the replay. In the final in the final podcast, you will hear the lovely. The, I, I wish I knew the name of the uh, artist who created it. I, I got to look that up so I can give him a plug every once in a while. Yeah, he does a pretty. He he did a good job, and and for the we, we still got the hangout going. Um, I saw Coldplay for the first time in the halftime of the Super Bowl. They oh suck. yeah, they totally <laughs> suck. <laughs> I wouldn't know that. That's that's the time when I turn it off and and go do other things. I, I'm I'm just being I'm just being nasty. That's all. <laughs> Snarky. <laughs> So uh, anyhow, okay, I'm going to end the... Uh, the